Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Story Pilgrim. Cape Town. I'm so excited to share this particular journey. But before I do, please review this podcast, follow this podcast, like this podcast and share this podcast. Thank you. Now with that out of the way, Cape Town, South Africa. A destination that has beckoned at the top of my list for decades offers a captivating blend of history, natural beauty, and cultural richness, making it a must-visit for any storytelling pilgrim seeking inspiration from its diverse tapestry of tales. It is a slightly blustery Saturday afternoon in Cape Town, South Africa. This is a country that I have been wanting to come to for a very long time, for decades. I've worked with a lot of South Africans as I've traveled around the world and the way that they describe it to me made it very, very attractive uh, to come and visit. Uh, But I don't know what it is, just something about this place that just really, really calls to me and I finally made it. I'm walking along the the seafront here in Cape Town. I only arrived a few hours ago, so I haven't really had a chance to to discover and have a look around. But I've come straight down here to the seafront and I can see very clearly off in the distance there, Robben Island, and immediately, obviously, the thoughts come to Nelson Mandela, who was on, imprisoned on there uh, from 1964 to 1982. 18 years of his life he spent on that island. Now, I don't know what he saw, what he could see um, of Cape Town from wherever he was on there, but Cape Town is really, um, what's the words? It's it's right it's in your face it's it's like there's table mountain there's lion head it's very very distinctive so and there are multitude of people that are much more qualified to talk about Nelson Mandela than than myself but just thinking what would he have what would he what did he think during those 18 years of looking over here and just not being able to do Uh, much about it I mean he did a lot about it that's the thing isn't it which is quite amazing and that's that's a completely different discussion for somebody who like I said is much more qualified than me to talk about this Um, but as I'm walking along here is a a nice lovely promenade promenade wherever you're from and and there's very jagged rocks Uh, there's no beach at at this point where I am I think there are beaches around here but it's very very jagged rocks and it was quite interesting just before I I switched on here I was walking along and amongst all the rocks and they're very angular um, they're very very distinct and they're very um, what's the word I'm looking for They're, they're very precise and bouncing in amongst all these rocks was this bright yellow balloon just sort of like just flittering on the surface um now what metaphor you want to use for that i'll let you do that um but it was just very very bizarre and these very black very sharp spiky rocks and this little balloon was just dancing amongst them all very delicately so much history here so many stories so many people that i've met who have lived abroad from all an, an ethnicities who are South Africa, um, her, the constant thing that I heard from them was like, I love my country, it's one of the best places in the world. I just wish they could sort the politics out. Again, I keep talking about politics and religion and I don't want this podcast to be anything about that, really. It's about stories. But then I guess, you know, it's about stories and it's about sacred things that are sacred to us. And I guess that comes, that covers everything really, doesn't it? It covers culture, it covers politics, it covers family, it covers religion, it, it covers it all. 
really. So, like I said, I'm 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 figuring this out uh, as I'm going along, and I'm very very fortunate to be able to be in a position to to travel. I'm just stopped and looking over the the little sea wall that they have here, and there is an immense amount of huge seaweed just uh, what seems to be just floating in between again those jagged rocks and every now and again they've built out like a little concrete area that you can um, you can walk out into and they've created little pools for you to be able to go and swim in It's Diwali and uh, just come across a little uh, procession. They are pulling with giant ropes a huge float. It's uh, being pulled by humans. Diwali, the festival of lights, illuminated Cape Town with a radiant celebration of culture and spirituality, adding a dazzling and noisy touch to the evening. Next morning, I plan to hike up Table Mountain. Right, so about to uh, set off and do the walk up to Table Mountain. It's going up Plate Clip Gorge. Starting at about 380 meters and rising up to just over a thousand, I think a thousand and fifty meters. It looks extremely steep. It's a lovely day, so we have to be careful with the sun and the heat. And uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. The views at the moment are absolutely stunning, but we're we're at the bottom. So I'm sure it's only going to get better. So uh, we're only a few steps up, say a few steps up, maybe 100 meters up. So, but this is going to be a really steep walk up to the top. But uh, this uh, plate clip gorge has a little stream running down it, and. Uh, it's very, there's just a lot. There's a lot of rock, it's all in layers, but there's some beautiful flowers. There's very, there's pinks and purples and yellows. Lots of uh, greenery, small trees. Not very, not much shade at all, a lot of heather. Uh, and then just the, the, the face of the rock. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting walk today. Not very far, but quite steep. Okay, I am not going to be doing much talking on this climb because that's what it is. Um, up plate kit, clip gorge. Um, it's just a series of steps, uh, all very well cut out into the side of the mountain. Um, and then the gorge gets thinner and thinner as you go up it uh, with the summit table rock on your right as you're going up it's just a series of switchbacks it's really steep but when you stop and you look around it's just a fantastic view down into the harbour of uh, Cape Town but I imagine when we get up at the top you're going to get a 360 view uh, yeah, I'm really struggling. It's a beautiful day, which is not necessarily good because it's very hot. There's, uh, at the moment, there's not much sky, uh, not much clouds in the sky. 
uh, resulting in the sun being able to do its full whack on us. Um, so yeah, keep up with plenty of water, taking plenty of little stops, um, and uh, we'll check in with you probably at the top, you know, unless I see something else. Again, beautiful flowers, it's, it's just absolutely stunning. You can do it. Thank you. Dian, eerste to Luca to Akke. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm at a place now in the gorge where I've got sheer rock either side of me. It's majestic. It's just there. It knows it's there and it's telling you I'm here. And uh, I don't know if you could hear that. It was like just water dripping through the rock. There's all these very straight, sharp, angular cuts into the rock. It's absolutely stunning. Still got the same view looking back behind me down to Cape Town and you see a bit of the harbour now. It's been closed off by, by the fact that I am walking into the gorge. Uh, gorgeous thinnest part. Uh, this is one of the, this is probably the hardest walk, climb I have done in a very long time. But it is, uh, it's thrilling. It's really hard on the knees. It's not that long. It's not a long walk at all. It's just, con you're just like climbing stairs. And some very steep stairs. At very, various parts. Some various parts they've put in barbed wire fence along the sides to you know protect you protect the environment more than anything beautiful uh, uh, bushes and flowers and shrubs stunning as i was walking up there were people walking down i love the encouragement there that i got from that young lad cheeky little blighter love it i made it to the top eventually okay so that's the major climb done still got a little bit to go to get to the top where the the cable car station is but uh, I'm at the top wow what a, what a, an amazing little walk uh, it's not that little really um, but we come up here I can see the other side just the sea at the moment and it's very calm compared to yesterday. Yesterday it was extremely windy. Today there's not much wind at all. There's a little bit of wind coming up through the gorge. But that's just created because of the, that. Um, but let's get up to the top and uh, have a look. There's one little bit of a climb here. But <clears throat> you can probably hear this uh, chain link like rope fence here to help you uh, along the way. So the top is uh, very flat um, and there's just gorse and like this very tight long stringed glass, uh, grass very tight long stringed grass there are butterflies up here flitting around you can tell that there's uh, lots of little uh, pools made in the rock. You can see it's just scattered with it all. <clears throat> so you can imagine when the rain when it does get wet up here, it's going to capture just absolutely stunning views down along the coast, looking off to what would be the east. You can see a few of the beaches down there. Uh, I can't see round the corner yet because I'm still walking down towards where the cable car station is. But a perfect day for it. There's no very, very still up here, which makes it quite, uh, quite romantic with the butterflies flittering around. 
It was absolutely worth the effort to make it to the top. The views were a great reward. Being treated to the whole view of Cape Town set my mind a wandering. One of the other things I've also uh, been wanting to think about today is uh, what is what is a walk? You know, um, what what it, I mean, we that's a silly question, really, isn't it? But like today, for me, it wasn't a hike. It was a it was a climb. It was it was a con continuous going up 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 it was steps up all the way um, for a couple of kilometers and uh, you know for me a hike is uh, is more of uh, going from one place to another which is what we've just done but uh, a bit more undulating uh, this was this was just literally I need, I'm here and I need to get up there um, yeah, it was absolutely uh, stunning. So, yeah, just uh, thinking about, you know, what is going for a walk, thinking about my time in Mumbai, thinking about uh, Gandhi and doing his walks and his pilgrimages. Um, is this a place of pilgrimage? I guess it is. There's a lot of locals up here who have come from various parts of South Africa um, to be up here and to view their country. You can see off in the distance loads of mountains and... You know, this is a huge country. There's a lot to it, a lot of history here. So yeah, people have traveled from all over to, to be here. Uh, as I was walking up, I walked past and people walking past me, you were Italian, Spanish, French, Dutch, English, American, South African, uh, f from all over, all ethnicities, all walks of life. Um, really really fascinating that you know nature can really bring uh, people together in that way there's uh, a lot of uh, blackbirds flying around and uh, they've got like red tip on their wings i think that's an african uh, pine starling So I'm up by the cable car station now and you can have an amazing view of uh, all the way around the coast. Um, you can see Robben Island out there. When you're up here, it doesn't look that far away. When you're down on the ground, it looks a long way away. But from up here, it doesn't look very far away at all. It's just sat there in the bay. You see the port, uh, the airport. Uh, you see where we've come from up uh, down it's down there it's about 700 meter climb you see all the little switchbacks of different walks going up uh, lion head is over there stretching out in front of us and then our hotel is at the end of lion head um, it's absolutely stunning beautiful day to be up here perspective how often do we change our perspectives is it healthy too yeah I was treated to a magnificent display that morning. I'm so lucky. I took the cable car down, back to my hotel for a rest. That evening, I went out for another walk. It is a extremely beautiful Sunday evening here in Cape Town. I'm walking along the promenade. See on my left, Cape Town on my right, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people walking along, just delighting in the evening sunshine. Families, a lot of families, friends, just people out for a walk. People just sat on the grassy areas, people sat on the beach, people playing within the rock pools, all shapes and sizes, all ethnicities, all, all walks of life uh, are out this evening. And I mentioned it before about thinking about, uh, as I was going up, Table Mountain, what constitutes a walk, what constitutes a hike, what constitutes a climb. 
Well, again, let's turn to the Oxford English Dictionary and have a look. The Oxford English Dictionary definition of a walk is to move or go somewhere by putting one foot in front of the other on the ground but without running. Okay, so that's a walk. A hike, to go for a long walk in the country, especially for pleasure. Okay, a long walk in the country, especially for pleasure. And climb, to go up something toward the top, to climb a mountain, hill, tree, wall. So, I guess the walk and the hike. Oxford English Dictionary says in, in the country. Um, but you could say, well, it doesn't say countryside, it's in the country. I'm in the country of South Africa, I'm walking, so therefore am I on a hike? It's a bit of a shady, blurry definition, isn't it? Um, we walk, yeah, when we hike. But for me, a hike has got more of a... Trying to trying to use my words. This is where my dyslexia really holds me up sometimes. Um, hike is is very much more defined and definitive in a way. It really you really see. Yeah, I'm going on a hike. I'm going to hike. It's it's kind kind of aggressive in a way. Is it? Mm, I kind of could use that term I think uh, and then the pilgrimage is just a very long walk isn't it or does it have to be long to me a pilgrimage kind of has to include I think we spoke about this before like some sort of sacrifice um, whether that is time money uh, giving up something uh, uh, some sort of sacrifice, that's what sacrifice is, giving up something, isn't it? Um, so yeah, so as I walk along the promenade here, I am going somewhere, I'm putting one foot in front of the other, um, I'm not running. Um, I met a gentleman this morning who uh, went says that he goes up Table Mountain quite regularly, but he he runs up it. Um, obviously, for fitness, and he's extremely fit to be able to do that. So yeah, I mean, all of the walks that I do, all of the hikes that I do, are a walk. This morning, definitely, that was a climb. We were going to get to the top of that mountain. But again, this is it's been an interesting trip for me so far because, as I said, I really was looking forward for a very long time to come to this country. And I think my expectations uh, were maybe a little bit too high. It's also been jaded by my past conversations with South Africans who have left the country and are living in America or England or when I work with them on the cruise ships, they all had, they were all very, very opinionated about their country. And that has kind of jaded, has kind of sitting in the back of my mind with regards to how I am viewing the country now. Simple little things that uh, maybe on the face of things you don't really notice. But if you look, all of the service jobs, all of the service industry jobs are all taken by a people of certain ethnicities. You don't see many white people in those industries. The South Africans, the white South Africans that I have encountered here are very brash, are very demanding. Um, that's a huge judgment for me to make. It's just my experience of what I have experienced since being here. And I haven't been there that, 
that long and I'm having a very small little experience of that. But I bet if I went on a wine tour, you can probably guarantee most of the people that I would encounter on that would be, again, of a certain ethnicity and would be of a certain uh, class and upbringing. And it, it kind of... Obviously, the history that this country has regarding all of that, you know, and we as, as a nation, Britain, have a big hand in that. Um, it's not going away, even though they might say it has. As I'm walking down here now, I'm coming up to a wonderful statue, art installation, I would more call it, called the Rhinosaur. Um, and it's a rhinoceros, but the, it's like spread over 40 feet. Uh, and there's little pieces of this rhinoceros uh, that are done in metal. It's very flat. And at one end, there's a sight of a gun. And if you look through the sight of the gun, the rhinoceros looks complete. It looks whole. It looks it's right there. But as you walk past it, it's, it's just pieces that are spread out totally. And... The description says the crosshairs. When you engage with this sculpture by looking through the crosshairs of the sights, consider this. The last time that a rhino is seen alive is through the sights of the poacher's rifle. The sculpture is spread over 41 meters to emphasize the iconic status of the rhino. But when you look through the crosshairs, the parts blend together and appear flat to remind us that once all rhinos have been poached, this is all that we have left. Flat images. Oh, it's brilliant, isn't it? It really is. So I'm going to turn around. I'm going to head back towards where I am staying. Uh, get a bite to eat on the way back. But a delightful evening stroll. Oh, that's another word. Stroll. Oh, I've got to put that one in now, haven't I? What's a, what's a stroll? Mm, isn't that a leisurely walk? Is that, is that what I've just done? There we go, we can have a walk, we can have a stroll and a hike, dull differing speeds, yeah? Uh, I mean, what about skipping? You know, I did ask uh, one of my friends the other day, when was the last time you skipped? Uh, and he said, oh, just the other day, actually. Uh, so that kind of put a, put a dampener on that one, didn't it? So that we then skipped to the coffee shop. It was quite delightful. There's, there's, there's some joy in skipping. When was the last time you skipped? For me, it was a few days ago. For my friend, he does it quite regularly. Um, and when I mean skipping, I don't mean with the rope. I mean skipping. Come on, get out there and skip. Have a skip. It's great. What is a stroll? Skipping. An aggressive hike. Country, countryside. I think I was a little delirious, maybe a touch pedantic, but that's just me. Simple observations can most times be the most truthful. Listen to your heart. The next morning plans had changed. Decided against going up lion heads today, basically because it's just covered in cloud. So getting to the top would be uh, a physical achievement, but you wouldn't see anything because it literally is in cloud, as is Table Mountain this morning, today. And it doesn't look like that cloud is moving anywhere. It literally is just sat on top of the mountains. So as I'm walking down the coast here, you can see several points where the mountains are jutting out into the sea. And they are all just like got these clouds just sat on top of them. I have traveled the world and I've never quite experienced a landscape like this. I am walking down, I'm in an area called Maiden's Cove at the moment. I'm walking down towards the, the sea. 
and there's beautiful I'm walking on beautiful white sand and I'm just surrounded by these giant rocks huge rocks that are just on the coastline there's little tufts of grass uh, there's flower yellow, yellow flowers there's like these succulents um, growing out of the sand um, and then the water is just so clear it's uh, very um, blues, greens, turquoises and I'm looking out towards Clifton Bay which stretches out in front of me now I'm going to walk back up and and walk around into that we just took this little detour to come and stand right down here at the sea edge it's just absolutely breathtaking if you ever do get a chance to come to South Africa then please do it's a really interesting landscape which then obviously has influenced the people that live here it's just, it's just beautiful. I'm walking back north now along the Victoria Road, coming up into Clifton. And as you look up to Clifton, it's, it's stunning. It's beautiful. There's just uh, all these houses going up. It, which is basically the, the mountain that goes up to Lion Head. But as you look up, it sort of uh, goes up and then plateaus out. And as you're walking up, you can see a house up there which has very flat roofs. They all have mainly flat roofs, but this one is very spread out, a lot of flat roofs. There are a men stood on top, I presume they're men, stood on top of the roof. Uh, the reason why I'm looking at that and pointing it out, that is the president's home, Cyril... Ramaposa and it's all like you can see all the way around it all the grass is cut and you can see quite a large fence going around that home up there uh, yeah as far as I'm aware Cyril has been in he's in his second term now uh, of office so yeah they, he has a home up there and there it is well it was turning out to have been worth the wait never give up on your goals your dreams they are all achievable i firmly believe in that again the walk today began to work its wonder on me and my mind kicked in what are your thoughts on when you go for a walk stroll hike climb wander do you stick in your headphones and listen to music, a podcast, an audio book? Or do you like to do it as I do and keep my ears naked and listen to you, yourself? Because sometimes, well, I know from personal experience, I make a lot of noise. Especially like yesterday when you're walking up a hill and you're like completely out of breath. Uh, the environment around you what is that I remember doing the Camino and coming to the end and there were countless people walking along with either portable speakers or I encountered a couple of people who had very big boom boxes uh, and just blasting music out you're in the middle of the countryside and they're walking along uh, in what I would call infecting the environment around them with their personal choices. Uh, well, what do you prefer? And for me, going for a walk, going for a stroll, going for a hike is all about being present. It's all about, yeah, I reflect, I go into my head, but I'm also always constantly aware of where my feet are going, what is around me potential dangers, potential uh, amazing things that I might miss out on. 
and yeah I, I know you visually can keep aware of that but you know to me there's a lot of uh, moments where I've heard something and I'm like oh what's that and uh, then it will appear or it won't appear yeah just wondered what your thoughts were on that it's a uh, it's a very 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 interesting part of the world as I've said before one that I have waited decades to be able to come to I really hope that this isn't my last time of being here again I am extremely lucky to be able to to travel as I have done as I'm continuing to do so I'm very, I'm very very blessed I barely scratched the surface of what Cape Town and South Africa has to offer. The time was limited, but I endeavoured to make the most of it. As I continue to travel, I am in awe at nature, its adaptability, its strength and beauty. Never underestimate its power. Also, the power and resilience of man. As Nelson Mandela said... I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. As I walk in different places, I grow and am lifted higher. I wish that for you too. Thank you for listening. Please follow, like, comment and share this podcast. The Story Pilgrim was written and produced by Darren Hill. Original music by the amazing Anya Baca. Until next time, keep listening and buen camino.